What's up, Joiners? V here, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about how to apply for an airspace authorization. Not an easy process, but we're gonna do it, so let's get into it. This is something that I get asked a lot. A lot of this came from one of my drone flying partners, Wolfgang Weber. He does a lot of the drone authorizations for me and for my company. I've worked on uh, doing the nighttime waivers with him before, as well as the, the authorizations to be able to do this. And what I'm gonna give you guys today is a general guideline of the things that you're gonna need to include when you write the sections that they're gonna have for you. Now, the first thing you're gonna have to do is actually go to the FAA's website, which is FAA. Yeah, it is, it's that, .fa.gov. Link is gonna be below. But go to that, pretty much you're gonna have to create a profile if you don't already have one. Register the drones if you haven't already done that. Um, it's a very simple process. Maybe I'll make another video about that. But you have to have your drones registered. You already have to have a profile on there. And then if you go scroll down, as you can see, is there's a spot where you say, how you know, look for an authorization. And so you just click here and you pretty much follow the instructions. Now there's even like on the left side of the screen, as you can see, there's even some stuff that shows you like here's tips on how to do it. Very helpful. I highly recommend you read that as well. Now what I'm going to give you guys today is just pretty much the way that I've done it and I've gotten approved for multiple waivers. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my process so I can guide you on your research and the way that you're going to write it. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna give you guys everything because, you know, if y'all using the same template as me, then mine aren't gonna get approved anymore. So I can't give y'all exactly the wording, but I'm gonna hook you up. You could ask yourself, why do I need an airspace authorization waiver? Well, the real reason is if you are a commercial pilot, it is so you can fly in more areas because as of now, you can even open up your air maps and it'll say you shouldn't fly in this classy airspace because of this airport or whatever that is, even though you might not actually be that physically close to it. So these authorizations allow you to be able to fly maybe at the ceiling of 200 feet or whatever in spaces where you normally can't get a LAA, LAANC, a Lance, authorization on the, on the money. Like this is saying, hey, I have authorization to fly near this airport already anyway. And when you're submitting for permits and things like that when you're doing LA, it's really useful to have that and say, look, we're good. I can fly here. I've already gotten authorization from the FAA and let's do it. First things first, you actually have to put in your company information, your main contact, and the drone info. As I told you before, you have to have your drone already registered, and so just make sure that that's on there, it's good to go. Next up, you're gonna have to describe every single thing that you kind of you do with your company. Now for me, I own a video production company. So we work on movies, TVs, films, you know, whatever, like commercials, like I just named all the things, like we are a video production company, we are using drones to be filming, you know, and just go in and say, here's exactly why I need this waiver, is because of this, this, and the third. If you're doing commercial stuff, if you're doing real estate stuff, then just say what kind of drones you're using because you might think drones are only being used for video, videography, but there's many, many more uses. There's thermal cameras on them, you could be carrying something on it, you know, there's just a lot of things that you could be applying for these waivers for. One thing that I highly recommend you do while you're describing who you are and what you're wanting to do is use different parts of the legislation as reference points. So for example, you know, just show that you're well read and you understand what they are. So for example, the 107.41 is the wide authorization. That is the exact one we're talking about here. But the other one is the 107.29 is the daytime or the nighttime waiver, the daylight waiver. And be able to reference that. For me, I referenced that in mind because I already had the nighttime or the daylight waiver. So I referenced like, oh, as I have already told you guys in this other waiver that I've done at, you know, reference point 107.29, here's the waiver number that I have and the authorization that I have, you pretty much reference that, hey, I've already gotten this from you guys before. And if you haven't, then say, you just reference that point and say, I've read this law pretty much so they know exactly what it is that you're talking about. That was a really good catch. Up next, the biggest thing they really wanna know is safety, safety, safety. And so you're gonna have to mention uh, air traffic control. And pretty much what you need to do is whatever the spaces that you're looking to get this authorization, look for the air traffic control phone numbers and who you're gonna be contacting to let them know 30 minutes before your flight that you're gonna fly and then after you're done that you're done. As well, if you have any issues, they're gonna be the ones you're, who you're gonna be contacting and coordinating with and receiving instructions. Now, another thing you need to do when you contact them is to make sure you let them have your contact information so they can contact you and possibly one other person on your production that are there with you or your job, I should say, I shouldn't say production, but one other person that's gonna be there with you to be able to have you and a secondary contact in case they need to tell you to cease and desist or whatever it is, make sure that they have your contact information. And even when I took it a step further, I put in there like, this is the this is the ATC phone number for this particular area because I'm applying for this waiver. This is the number I will call. Here's what I will say to them. Like be very, very detailed. More you write, the more detailed you are, the better you'll be off. Also mention that your pilot command will be using the UAS facility maps. Now, if you don't know what that is, I have a link below, but that's pretty much saying what are the updates 
updated what's happening right now in different airspaces when things are changing. So that tells you when the TFRs are happening or any other kind of like variable changes to the airspace and what kind of waivers are being affected, where the ceilings are, where you can fly. So it's something you should be referencing, especially when you're flying in non-G airspace. But it's something you should pretty much be looking at anyway. You know, you could do that through other apps like Air Maps and things like that. But I specifically said that I'm using the FAA version of it. And I'm going to this particular link um, so they know that I'm using their website to get the most up-to-date stuff. And one other thing to talk about is mocha. And no, I'm not talking about some kind of museum or some kind of coffee. What MOCA is, is the minimum obstacle clearance altitude. So pretty much saying like, hey, I'm gonna make sure I'm above every single thing while I'm flying, I'm gonna verify that. And not even am I gonna verify that, I'm also going to specify in my remote settings and how the drone is going to work, that even if I was to lose connection to this drone, the altitude that it will fly to before it flies back to me when it does its return to home, as you will describe as well, it will fly over anything around me because I've already figured out what the MOCA is. And another thing you need to do, again, is go through and describe all of those systems and how they work. Assume that you're writing this to somebody who doesn't know how whatever drone system you're using works, works. So even if it's like, oh, well, everybody knows how the return to home system works on a DJI drone, they don't. They want you to explain it and they want you to understand the importance of the safety behind that because that is what you're trying to teach them is that I understand how to be safe as a drone pilot. So that's how I can get a special privilege to fly in a place that needs to have additional safety requirements. So also you should talk about what to do in the event of a flyaway. And no, nobody has Phantom 2s anymore, but you know, just in case. But those, those flyaways are, can be a big deal. They have been a problem and it's really important, specifically when you're flying in these particular airspaces, that you are on it. So if you have a flyaway, the thing that you should let them know is what you'll immediately do is look at the tele telemetry data, the direction the drone is flying, and also notify the ATC, air traffic control, tower that you've already identified earlier on and that number and let them know everything you know about the direction the drone was going, you know, and everything else. Like, hey, it was going this speed, it was going this fast, I lost eye line, you know, visual line of sight at this point, it was a flyaway, I'm very sorry, I'm doing everything I can to attempt control, but I'm alerting you that you do have an object flying in this direction. You know, safety stuff. One of the things that you should specify is that you will make sure that all operations will maintain or be in under 1,000 feet AGL. Now, you should know what that means if you have a part 107 or AGL. I'm not gonna tell you what that means because you should know what that means. You should specify that and also specify that if there's any kind of weather conditions like fog or anything like that that are allowing the visibility to be compromised, you will not conduct the flight because obviously you're putting safety first. After you submit all of this information and answer all their questions, it typically takes somewhere around, they say like 72 hours to like a week. I got mine in like 48 hours, to be honest. Um, I think it just really depends on you know, how much, how many uh, applications they're getting and what's really going on with their staffing. It happened really fast. You pretty much just get an email with an attachment that says, here you go. And is this all worth it? Yes, because it lasts for two years. So some companies even go as far as to be able to create a template of the best way to do this and then apply to a lot of different major airports all over the country or major airport areas all over the country so that when they do get that call to be able to do a job somewhere, they already have the authorization and may even be able to upcharge for that because, I mean, they can't fly there, but I can. So I think that's worth more money. I already put in the time and effort. After you get your waiver, whether it be the daytime waiver, whether it be this kind of waiver that I was talking about today, they will all be in your profile on the FAA's website that I referenced in the beginning of the video. So you can access them anytime. You can download them. You can even look at the way that you applied to them before and all this, the vernacular that you use to be able to do that. So the FAA website is actually very easy to use in that and it will show you that your uh, application is in progress. It'll even tell you if you got it or if you didn't. So just make sure you just check it. And if you ever need to reference anything, you always have it on the site. All right, joiners, thank you guys so much for getting through this with me. I know you guys are gonna have some questions and thoughts and concerns. Please hit me in the comment section. Uh, I'm here to help. I'm not here to write these waivers for you. But if you do have some really good questions or things that I, you know I missed, please educate each other, help educate me, even though I've gotten them. But you know, let's do that in the comment section. And if you wanna see more videos where I'm talking about more dr pro drone stuff, well, they're right here. Or if you wanna see the greatest drone intro video for a YouTube channel of all time, it's right there. As always, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button and the notifications button so you know that, well, we know you're supporting us and you know we're putting stuff out and make sure you stay fly.